1.7 is on rational exponents. So we have a couple examples. So it says the exponent 1 over n indicates the nth root. So do you guys remember when I taught you guys how to put in like the cube root on your calculator? And you could hit math and then use the cube root button. But I said there was another way. So if you had the cube root of 800, you could put it in as 800 raised to the one third power. Okay. So any kind of root, like a fourth root, fifth root, whatever, can be written as a one over that power. So the fourth root would be one fourth. Fifth root would be one fifth. Okay. That's a very quick way of putting in all kinds of roots on your calculator. So that's what this is saying. So if I have 81 um, to the 1 fourth, what that represents is the fourth root of 81. Do you guys know the fourth root of 81? Three. It is 3, yep, because 81 breaks into 9 and 9, which has factors of 3, 3, 3, and 3. All right, so something like this. We were doing this, but I don't think you realized what you were doing when you were doing it. We said that if I have the cube root of x to the 6, I can divide the 6 by 3, right? So the reason that works the way it does is because it's really x to the 6th, y to the 12th, all raised to the 1 3rd power. And we learned with exponents that we can multiply our exponents into a product. So if I did 6 times 1 3rd, I get squared, and then y to the 4th. So that's why it works. So if I have an exponent that's not like 1 over 4 or 1 over 2, and instead I have 3 over 4 or 7 over 2, right, there's also a power that it's being raised to as well. Um, so if I have 9 to the 3 over 2, I'm going to rewrite it as the square root of 9, all raised to the 3. Okay, so the bottom number is your root. I don't have much space here. The bottom number is the type of root, just like before. Like a one-third power would be cube root, so one-half the square root. And then that 3 is the power that you're going to raise it all to. Now, you can write it in lots of different ways. So you could have written the square root of 9 cubed with the 3 on the inside like that. <coughs> I don't know why I put parentheses around it, but like you could have written the, the 9 to the 3 over 2 like 9 to the 3 all under a square root. But the reason that I do not like that notation is because I can't do that in my head. 9 to the 3, do you guys know what 9 to the 3 is? No. Like who knows what 9 to the 3 is? I actually don't know what 9 to the 3 is. 729. <laughs> Most people don't know what 9 to the 3 is. And then taking the square root of it, that's pretty hard, right? So um, instead, it's easier to do the square root of 9 first. What's the square root of 9? Do we all know that? 3. So then what's 3 to the 3? It's 27, exactly. Much easier to do the root first and then the power. So if I have um, the fifth root of x to the third, could I write it with an, a fractional exponent, a rational exponent? Sure, it's x to the 3 over 5, like that. So x to the 3 over 5. So number one, so write the expression in radical form and simplify. If you will not attain a real number, write no solution. So if I have negative 32 to the 3 fifths, we're going to write it with the square roots, or with the types of roots, right? So I'm going to write it in radical form is how I phrase it. So if I have negative 32 to the 3 fifths, that fifth is my type of root that I have. So I'm going to have a fifth root. The 3 is my type of power that I have, what I'm going to raise it to. So as I rewrote, write, rewrite, I have the fifth root of negative 32, and all of that is raised to the 3. Are you all able to do the fifth root of negative 32 in your head? Yeah, it's not just 2, though. Negative 2. So negative 2. So it's going to be negative 2 cubed. So you would do 32 and break it into its factors, 8 and 4. And it's 2, 2, and 2. 2 and 2. So as you guys are doing more homework, I'm sure you guys are picking up on a lot of these things. Like 16 is 2 to the 4, right? You guys starting to realize, oh wait, I know what to do these. All right, so what is negative 2 to the 3? Negative 8, that's our answer. So 30, negative 32 in parentheses raised to the 3 fifths is the same as negative 8. So these are great questions for a non-calculator test. <laughs> you guys all look at me like, what? <laughs> all right, so 64 to the 3 fourths. Or not 64, what am I talking about? 16 to the 3 fourths. So what are we going to do? So we're going to take the fourth root of 16, and then we're going to raise it to the 3. The fourth root of 16 is 2. 2 to the 3 is 8, exactly. So again, if you didn't know the fourth root of 16, do your factor tree off to the side. You'll see it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. All right, so this next one, this is the square root of negative 9, and then all of it raised to the 5. What do you think? Yeah, this one's no real solution, exactly. And I say real because I've kind of alluded to we're getting ready to learn something called imaginary numbers in 5.9. Um, <laughs> so it's like a whole new set of numbers. It's like when you were in elementary school and you learned about a, 
fractions for the first time. I don't know when you guys learn. My kid like knows it in kindergarten now. We didn't talk about fractions so early. Um, but yeah, and you guys were like, what are fractions? It's a whole new set of numbers. Well, this is a whole new set of numbers, imaginary numbers. All right, so 100 to the 1 half. So are you able to think about what that means in your head? Can you get the result? Ethan, what do you think? I don't understand how you got the one to the 1 half. Oh, because you can't take the square root of a negative number. Like, you can't have a number times itself so twice to get a, like, there's, it's not negative 3, right? Yeah. Oh, you were thinking it was the fifth root, right? So the, I see. All right, so yeah, this is 100 under the square root, right? So that's like an invisible 2. You can put the 2 there if you want, but it's a square root. And then it's raised to the 1, right? So you can put a 1 if you want to, but your answer ends up being 10. This one's a little bit harder to do in your head. 243 under a fifth root raised to the 4. Ooh. It is three, yeah. It's usually something super tiny, like two, three, four, maybe. Not anything much bigger than that. So it's three. Uh, and you can break it into its factor tree. It would be three and 81, and then 81 breaks into three, uh, four more threes. So you have a total of five threes. So we do get three to the fourth, and then three to the fourth is 81. All right, so negative 343 to the one-third. So it's going to be the cube root of negative 343. So this one does work. There's a solution. Yeah, it is. Good. But Natalie says 7. So if you're guessing and you're like, okay, well, let's start with 5. Do you guys all know 5 times 5 times 5? 125. So it's bigger than that, right? Because we want 343. So then if you try 6, one quick way of checking whether or not 6 works is if you do 6 times 6 times 6, 6 times 6 ends in a 6, right? It's 36. And then what do the ones digits multiply? So if I did 36 times 6, what would it end in? It would end in a 6, right? But if I try 7, 7 times 7 is 49. It ends in a 9. If I multiply by a 7, what's it going to end in? A 3. So that would be one that I would try. So I'd be like, ooh, 49 times 3. Or it's 49 times 3. 49 times 7 is 63. 28 plus 6 is 34. So you can do it off to the side if you need to. Negative yeah. 340. Yeah, so it's negative 7 is your answer. I was going to get the negative at the end. You just want a bonus point. All right, so let's go the opposite way. So let's say it's in the rational, or it's in the radical form, and we want to write it with rational exponents, with fractional exponents. So this one is going to be 13 raised to the 4 over 8. Remember, the bottom number is your type of root. That's the key. And 4 over 8 makes 1 half. So it would be 13 to the 1 half. So 13 to the 1 half, is there another way? How do I write that with radicals? Like how do you take 13 to the 1 I reduced 4 over 8. 4 over 8 is 1 half. How do you get 13 to the 1 half? I took the power divided by the root. How do you get half? That's what we're learning today. <laughs> so we just did it. Yeah, we did these. 3 over 2 puts the 3 here, the root there. Fifth root of x cubed, 3 and 5. We're doing it. All right, so if I have 3 to the 15th under a fifth root, right, this is going to be 3 to the power on top, root on bottom, so 15 over 5. So it's going to be 3 to the 3. And do you guys know what 3 to the 3rd is? 27, exactly. So can you imagine doing that like the long way and finding 3 to the 15th and then finding the cube root of that? That would be take a really long time. It's nice to know these tricks. So if I have 11 to the 6 and it's under a cube root, it's going to be 11 to what power? 6 over 3, right? Which is 2. So 11 squared is 121. Exactly. All right. So I should have put something like this, this next kind on your homework. So I like the ones like what we just did, the, all the examples we did, these are all good things to do without a calculator, like knowing how to do these examples. I probably won't go as big as 343. Like, that's kind of a hard one, but. All right, I'm going to put these on your homework, and I forgot. So if I have 7 to the x times 7 to the x equals 7. Hmm. Yeah, what do you think? Is it 1 half? It is 1 half, yeah. So let's talk about how we can get that. So some of you guys can get it in your head, obviously. Okay, we just did it. Um, but some of you are going to be like, whoa, I have no idea what's going on. All right, so we know the rule where we have like x squared times x to the third equals x to the fifth, right? We know that we add exponents if we have the same base. 
That's what's happening in this. So if I have 7 to the x times 7 to the x, I have the same base. So when I add my exponents, I get 7 to the 2x equals 7. And 7 has a power on it. The number 7 is 7 to the 1, right? So what we're saying is that 7 to some number equals 7 to the 1. Doesn't 2x have to equal 1 then? 7 to the power equals 7 to the power. So 2x has to equal 1. There's a name for that in math. It's called the 1 to 1 property. So you can end up saying, well, that means 2x has to equal 1. Mm -hmm. So when you divide by 2, you get x equals 1 half. Okay, so how did Caleb know right away that it was going to be 1 half? Because he was saying, well, I know if I have the square root of 7 and I multiply by the square root of 7, that's how I get 7, right? So the square root of 7 is 7 to the 1 half. All right, so let's try this one. So I have 2 to a power times 2 to the power times 2 to the power. So I'm going to add my exponents. So how many n's do I have? 5. So it's going to be 2 to the 5n equals 2. Yeah, and so that's going to be a first power. Christian, you with me? Yeah. All right, so I have 2 to a power equals 2 to a power. Yeah, so I'm going to say 5n is, has to equal 1. 5n equals 1, so that mean, means n is equal to 1 fifth. So it was like the fifth root of 2 times itself 5 times gives you 2. Or you can also just count the power. Yeah. So those ones, I mean, you can kind of see where it's coming from. This one's a little harder. This one's definitely harder. We do things like this a lot in Chapter 10. So I'm even previewing Chapter 10. Double the chapter number. All right, so this one. So I have 3 to the 7n uh, divided by 5 times 3 to the 3n divided by 5. So we just said that we add our exponents, right? So when we have the same base, we add our exponents. Just like if I had 3 squared times 3 to the 5th, it would be 3 to the 7th. Do you guys all know that? Right, you'd have 7 3s lined up. That's what we're doing. So we're going to do 3 to the whatever 7n over 5 plus 3n over 5 is. What is that? 10n over 5, which is? 2n. So we have 3 to the 2n is equal to 81. Okay, and now these don't have the same base. So on these previous ones, I had like 7 to the 2x equals 7 to the 1, and I could say the powers were equal. And here I said 2 to the 5n equals 2 to the 1, so I could say the powers were equal. But we have something wrong here, right? Do we see it? We have 3 and 81. Yeah, Natalie, what do you think? How did I get rid of the 5? Oh, because it was 10n It was ten n divided by 5, oh, which okay. is 2n, yeah. So I want to know how I can get these, how I can set up my equation. So 81, think about the factor tree for 81. You with me back there? 81. 9 and 9, 3, 3, 3, and 3. So 81 is really 3 to what power? Four. To the 4. So let's write it as 3 to the 4th, right? So 81 is really 3 to the 4th. So we have 3 to the 2n equals 3 to the 4. Now can we say that the powers are equal to each other? Yeah, because we have the same base now. So we can say 2n has to equal 4. Yep, so n equals 2. And you can check if you go back to the original and you plug in 2, uh, you would have 3 to the 14 over 5 times 3 to the 6 over 5. It would end up being 3 to the 20 over 5, which is 3 to the 4, which is 81. So it works. Okay? Those ones are tricky. All right, so... Let's talk about simplifying. So it says a rational expression is fully simplified when it has no negative exponents, it has no fractional exponents in the denominator. So why is that? Like if I had 1 over x to the 1 half, isn't that really 1 over uh, the square root of x? Right? So we can't have x's with a, like a square root because then it's not like we would have to multiply to rationalize. Um, so we can't have any negative exponents, we can't have square roots in the denominator. You can't have a complex fraction. This is like where you have like 1 over x divided by 1 over x squared. That's a complex fraction. Do you guys see that? It's a fraction within a fraction. Is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> so you would have to simplify even more. And then the index of any remaining radical is as small as possible. So I'll show you an example of that. So this first one. So I have 7 to the 7 ninths times 7 to the 11 ninths. So remember we just added our exponents. So we're going to get 18 over 9 which is 7 squared. So our answer here is 49, exactly. So the next one, I have the 6th root of 16, and I have the cube root of 2. The 6th root of 16, it doesn't go down any further, right? And the cube root of 2, it doesn't go down any further. 
So it looks like it's kind of simplified already, except there's a root on the bottom. But we're actually going to do a trick here. Do you guys see how 16 and 2 could be written with the same base? Like 16 is like 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. It's 2 to the 4. Do we see that? So um, write with same base. Okay, so you may not quite understand what that means. So like instead of 16 to the 1 6th over 2 to the 1 3rd, I want to change 16 and 2 so that they become the same number. Okay. So 16, we just said, was 16 is equal to 2 to the 4th. So we're going to use that. Those ones are strange. So we're going to say, well, 16 is 2 to the 4th, so I have 2 to the 4th raised to the 1 6th. And then I have 2 to the 1 3rd on the bottom. So what do you think? 2 to the 4th to the 1 6th. What can I do there? 2 to the 4 6, which is really 2 to the, oops, I wrote 1 6 down there, didn't I? Almost fast enough. <laughs> so I get 2 to the 2 thirds all over 2 to the 1 third. Now what do I do with my exponents? Yeah. You subtract. Just like if you had x to the fifth over x to the second, you subtract these exponents, right? That's all we're doing. So we're going to have 2 to the 1 third. And you can leave the, your answer like that. That's fully simplified. No negative exponents, nothing on the denominator that has a root. right? Or you can write it, it doesn't matter, as the cube root of 2. So however, however you want to write it. All right, so how about the next one? Sorry, go back down. Okay. So I have 16 to the 3 fourths over 16 to the 5 fourths. Yeah, what's the first step? Well, they have the same base. They wrote 16, so we're good with the same base. Yeah, so if we subtract, so we have 16 to the whatever 3 fourths minus 5 fourths is. Let me write that stuff. Yeah, and what is negative 2 over 4? Negative 1 half. So uh, if I have 2 fourths, it's 1 half. So a negative exponent, negative exponents move things to opposite locations. So I'm going to do 1 over 16 to the positive 1 half, which is 1 over, let's write it with radicals. Maybe it will make more sense. Square root of 6, I don't know why I have like a weird thing there. Square root of 16. So our answer is 1 fourth, exactly. So it's just one step at a time. So we're just simplifying all the way down. All right, let's try the last couple of examples. So same thing on the next one. So go ahead and try number four. I'll flip here so you can see it. So we have 8 to the x times 2 to the 2x times 16. So I gave you a hint. I said write using one base. So can I rewrite 8 and 16 so that they have the same base as 2? Does it become 2 to something? Yeah, 8 is 2 to the 3. And 16 is 2 to the 4th, right? So that means that this is 2 to the 3 raise the x times 2 to the 2x, times 2 to the 4. So I'm just replacing things. So 8 is replaced with 2 to the 3, and 16 is replaced with 2 to the 4. Can you All right. Yeah. Does the x on the first 2 turn into 2 to the 3x? Yeah, so this becomes 2 to the 3x times 2 to the 2x times 2 to the 4. So we're going to add our powers. So when I add, I have 3x plus 2x plus 4. So our final answer, it looks a little strange, but it's 2 to the 5x plus 4. That's it. Fully simplified. Okay. Rodrigo, you there? <coughs> Gotta love double seventh period. Fun, fun. All right, the next one. So 36 and 32 cannot be written with the same bases. 36 is 6 times 6, and 32 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, but 6 can't break down into 2s, right? So let's just do one thing at a time. So if I do 36 to the 3 over 2, that is the square root of 36 cubed. And then the 32 to the negative 3 fifths, let's take care of that negative first. It's 1 over 32 to the positive 3 fifths, which is going to be 1 over the fifth root of 32 cubed. So how about this first part? This 
square root of 36. Six. To the three. So this is six to the three. Six to the three is kind of hard. Most of you guys probably don't know that one. Six to the three. Yeah, it's 216. So the six cubed. How about the next one? So the fifth root of 32. Two. Is two. Two cubed is eight. So putting this together, I have 216 times one over eight, which is really the same as 216 over eight. And that reduces. So you can divide by 2, divide by 2. I think you can do it three times. I think two, uh, 8 does go into 216. So you could also just do 216 divided by 8. It goes in uh, 2 times 16, 56. It goes in 27 times. So all of this simplifies down to 27. Or you could just reduce the fraction over and over again, like divide by 2 on the top and bottom. All right, is this all making sense? Does it kind of relate to what we've done before with exponents, 5.1? So if I have 81 to the negative 1 half, I don't like that as a negative exponent. Do you guys remember when we had negative exponents and we could move their location? That's what we're going to do here. So I have 81 to the positive 1 half on the bottom, and the 27 to the positive 2 thirds moves to the top. It's just like when we did the ones where it was like x to the negative 2, y to the 3, x to the 3, z to the negative 5. And we could move that one down as x squared and this one up as z to the fifth. Hopefully you remember that because that's still going to be on your test. It's still chapter 5. So we're going to find this one. So find 27 to the 2 thirds. So write it in its root form. So I have the cube root of 27 squared. And then 81, I have the square root of 81. So I don't need that little 2 there. To the first, right? Yeah, so cube root of 27 is 3. I'm going to start calling you guys. You look drowsy. Uh, let's see, Ethan, what do we get? Cube root of 27 was 3. 3 squared is 9. Julian, what's the bottom? Square root of 81. What's 9 over 9? Justin. 1. Is that what All right, so the next one, if I have 64 um, under a 6th root, Rodrigo, any idea? What times itself 6 times makes 64? Yeah, if you do 64 and you break it into its factor tree. <laughs> so how many, <laughs> what times itself 6 times will make 64 then? 2, yeah, so we have 2. And then we have the 6th root of x to the 4th. So what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of leaving this as the 6th root of x to the 4th, which we've done in the past, that's not really the so smallest index possible. The smallest index, the index is this little number here. Okay, so let's think about it. This is x to the... 4 6. And Sam, how does 4 6 reduce down? Divide by 2, divide by 2. Yep, one thing at a time, just the fraction 4 6. I surprised her. 2 thirds, right? And then if I'm going to write that with a root, I would write 2 cube root of x squared, like that. And that would be our answer. Does it make sense? That's what it means, like when it talked about simplifying square roots, if I go back to this page. It said, uh, the index of any remaining radical is the smallest possible. Okay, so I saw, I was like, oh wait, this is going to be 4 6. 4 6 reduces to 2 thirds, so instead of writing 4 6, I'm going to do x squared under a cube root. Okay, does it make sense? All right, so the next one. I have negative 8 to the negative 1 third, so it's a 1 over negative 8 to the positive 1 third. So Olivia, what is the cube root of negative 8? Cube root of negative 8. Uh-huh, so it's negative 2. So it's negative 1 half is our answer. All right, and then this one, number 9, what is, this is really saying is the square root of y plus 1 over the square root of y minus 1. That's what a 1 half power means. So when we see we have a square root on the bottom, so Abby, what do we do when we have a square root? The conjugate, yep, square root of y plus 1. She didn't know the word, but she knew what to do. All right, and then we FOIL it out. So we're going to do the first one times the second one. It is not 0. It doesn't just go away completely. All right, so the top becomes y plus the outer is square root of y. The inner is also square root of y, and the last is 1. 
And then on the bottom we have y. Outer and inner end up canceling. Do you guys see how it's plus square to y, minus square to y, minus 1? So these square root y's would go away. Yeah, Amelia? It has to do with the denominator. Yeah, so the denominator, since it was a minus, then it's going to be a plus. It's, don't ever use the numerator, yeah. So we're going to get y plus 2 root y plus 1, and it's all over y minus 1. And that's our answer. I never liked that because, to me, it seems more complicated, right? The other one was like y to the 1 half plus 1 over y to the 1 half minus 1. It seems so much cleaner. All right, and the last one we have deals with, like, plugging things into the calculator. So this is about uh, Oscar Chaplin III. Do you guys know who he is? No? Okay. So it says the formula m equals 512 minus 146,230 b to the negative 8 fifths can be used to estimate the maximum total mass that a weightlifter of b kilograms can lift in two lifts combined. So have you guys seen this uh, in the Olympics where they lift two times? So they like do the first one and they're like, Urgh. and they like lift it over their head. And they do a second one and they like, just, I don't know how they do it. It's insane. I can't even like lift the bar. So, um, so yeah, so he's lifting this over his head, and it's in two lifts. So they combine the two lifts for their final score. So part A says, U.S. weightlifter Oscar Chaplin III weighs 77 kilograms. That's not 77 pounds. I know you guys are not very good with the metric system, because it's not. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? Do we know pounds? Those of you that uh, know your weight in kilograms, how many kilograms are you? Do you know? You know how many? Oh, you're doing the conversion. How many kilograms are you? Um, 46. You're 46. 56. So it's like one and a half Christines. <laughs> That's how big he is. <laughs> All right. So what is the maximum amount he can lift in two lifts? So, so you were doing the conversion. It is 2.2. So, so he's 170 pounds. Come around there. So what is the maximum amount he can lift in two lifts? So um, we're going to plug that in for... Uh, B. So we're going to have M is equal to 512 minus 146,230 times 77 to the negative 8 fifths. So make sure you put this correct in your calculator. So try it along with me. Oh, I don't hear very much clicking. It's making me sad. It is. Isn't it weird? I don't know. How do they? Now I know. <laughs> M is the one we don't know, so we leave it in as M, like an X. Yeah, you're just simplifying the right-hand side of it. So I got 371.831, uh, I guess, kilograms. So that's a lot. <laughs> so we're going to figure out how much this is. So it says his total in the 2000 Olympics, so what we just found in part A is the maximum amount that the human body can physically lift in two lifts, lifts without, uh, I guess, I'm guessing that your back would break and so on, like without terrible things happening, being crushed, 371.831. And Oscar Chaplin, he's the man, right? So he got it in 330, he did 335 kilograms, which is pretty insane. So compare this value predicted uh, to the value predicted Pretty close, right? Well, let's find it. So it says convert your answer from part A by using the conversion one pound is equal to 0.4536 kilograms. So um, we're going to take the 371.831 and we're going to multiply. We're going to put that 0.4536 kilograms on the bottom and we're going to do one pound. I could have just used the 2.2 like you were talking about, too. All right, so we got 819.733 pounds. Kilograms canceled. All right, that's in two lifts. So that means in a single lift, he's about 410 pounds, right? That's a lot for a guy that's 170 pounds. That's pretty impressive. So, All right, that's your real-life problem of the day.